Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee are more accessible than most Pokemon games, but that doesn't mean everything in them is obvious. If you haven't played Pokemon in a while, or if you've never played a Pokemon RPG before, there are a few things you should know before jumping into Let's Go. If you've played previous Pokemon games, you might be used to catching a Pokemon once just to get it in your Pokedex, then battling the rest for experience. But in Let's Go, catching tons of the same Pokemon has its benefits. It's a great way to get experience points for your whole team, and you can transfer the extras to Professor Oak for candies that can be used to improve your Pokemon stats. The biggest benefit to catching a ton of Pokemon, though, comes from catch combos. To get a combo started, just catch the same species of Pokemon multiple times in a row. As your combo increases, you'll have a greater chance of finding rare Pokemon, even ones you normally wouldn't find in the wild, and the ones you catch will have better and better stats. High combos can even cause shiny Pokemon to spawn, which is never not exciting. Once you've registered 30 different species of Pokemon in your Pokedex, head to the building connecting Route 11 to Route 12. Go upstairs to find one of Professor Oak's assistants who will give you the judge function in your Pokemon box. This allows you to see the base stats of your Pokemon at a glance. These stats are also called individual values, or IVs, and they play a large part in how well your Pokemon performs in battle. As a bonus, your partner Pikachu or Eevee has perfect IVs. As you travel around Kanto, be sure to talk to every NPC. A lot of them say random things, but many others will give you helpful hints, items, or even Pokemon. You can trade with NPCs in different Pokemon centers to get the Alolan forms of certain Pokemon, like the super tall Executor, for example. There's even someone in Vermilion City who will give you a Pokemon that's exclusive to the other version of the game. And speaking of NPC gifts, like in Pokemon Yellow, NPCs and Let's Go will give you the three original starters from Red and Blue as long as you meet certain requirements. In this case, you have to have caught a certain number of Pokemon total. They can be the same Pokemon, so it's just about quantity. Get Bulbasaur in Cerulean City after you've caught 30 Pokemon total, head to Route 24 to get Charmander after you've caught 50, and get Squirtle from Officer Jenny in Vermilion City once you've caught 60. You can also catch the three starters in the wild, but any Pokemon you get from an NPC will have good stats automatically. The more Pokemon you catch, the more Pokeballs you'll use. And Pokeballs aren't cheap. Luckily, there are a few ways to make a quick buck. Your best bet is to sell stuff like Nuggets, Pearls, and Stardust since their only purpose is to be sold. There are also NPCs who will give you items like these once per day. If you're early in the game, a woman in the northwest corner of Pewter City will give you a big pearl if you watch her slowpoke for a bit. If you're a bit further along, use Strong Push on the block in the Warden's House in Fuchsia City to get a nugget from his Diglett. In Pokemon games, you can find items and Pokeballs throughout the world. But there are also hidden items strewn about, and they're easy to find if you know where to look. Specifically, watch Pikachu or Eevee's tail. It'll start to wag as you get closer to a hidden item, and when it's going really fast, press A. You can find rare and valuable items this way, so always keep an eye out. What are your best Pokémon beginner tips? Let us know in the comments, and stay tuned for more advanced Let's Go tips! <laughs>